Good afternoon, everyone. In this video, we're going to discuss the price action on the dollar index and some of our future products, futures products for Wednesday, September 13th, 2023. My name is Reese. I'm glad that you're with me. Uh, let's start with the dollar index, guys. We're going to start on the weekly chart. You can see that the weekly chart um, on the dollar index has recently traded above this um, high that we made on the Monday, the 29th of May, 2023. Um, we're coming into the consequent encroachment of this wick here. You can see that we've almost made it to the 50%. Um, guys, I continue to see dollar strength. Um, in my opinion, we're probably going to look at the week either ending in a green candle or a small black candle. I think we are at least going to trade up to 105 spot 260. Uh, I think we're headed in uh, generally a risk off environment, so dollar higher, stocks lower. So looking at our daily chart on the dollar index, um, we're coming, let's see, we have a buy side imbalance, sell side inefficiency, which is here, coming into that. And you can see that the price has kind of bounced off that a little bit on Wednesday's price action. And we could come down to the high of the Monday 4th of September's candle, which would be at 104 spot 273. Um, but I don't know if we quite do that, guys. I do foresee further strengthening in the dollar index. I'm not seeing anything at this point that would indicate to me that we're going to break lower. Um, although, of course, it's possible that we could trade down below this buy side imbalance, sell side inefficiency, invert it, and come after this sell side liquidity, 102 spot 942. All right, guys, let's talk about the MES on the start out on the weekly chart. On the weekly chart, we're in this old buy side imbalance, sell side inefficiency here. Um, nothing, nothing to me that really strikes strikes me visually on the on the weekly chart. Um, I would be just kind of looking at it at a first glance. I would be neutral on the S and P 500 at this point. Just looking at the weekly chart, um, I don't see. A reason for a strong bias although we do have an inefficient price delivery uh, to the south to the downside um, and that would the midway point of last week's candle the consequent encroachment of that wick would come in at 44.72 spot 75 um, and so we could look for price to come down and to trade into that inefficient price delivery let's take a look at the daily chart guys uh, Wednesday's candle was a short green candle and we close just about in the midway point of Tuesday and Monday's candle. Um, the gap in the chart here guys is for contract rollover. As you can see I'm, I'm using the continuous contract so I don't have to switch it over all the time. Um, I do think that looking at the daily chart my we a couple of reasons why it might want to go higher. Let's see. Sort of the bullish case. We have buy side liquidity higher here. We have these kind of near relative equal highs that price might want to come and take out. We've also got a sell side imbalance, buy side inefficiency up here, or SIBI. Um, looking at the downside, we have our contract rollover gap, which I don't know if that counts or not, but it, it is there. Um, and we also have an old. We have a sell side imbalance, buy side inefficiency here. Um, so at this point, I'm not super biased just looking at the daily chart on the S&P 500. Um, I would say that I slightly would lean to the downside um, looking now. I mean, my, my guess on the S&P 500 would be more likely than not, we trade down considering that we're having uh, dollar strength. I think it's more likely than not that price does start to come back down. That would be my my guess, but I'm not strongly biased just looking at this chart. Four hour chart, you know, this would make you think that it probably wants to come out and take out, take out the highs. Um, Let's see back to the daily chart. Got the relative equal highs. We have a sell side imbalance, buy side inefficiency higher. Four hour chart. 
I could see reasons for both. I'm not strongly biased looking at this. Um, let's check out the daily chart. Let's go. Uh, sorry. Let's check out the Nasdaq on the daily chart. Nasdaq sell side imbalance, buy side inefficiency here. That looks like price is wanting to trade back into. That is here. Um, all right. Uh, let's review the trades uh, that I have taken. Um, I will show you. It's been on crude oil. Alright. Um, I've generally been uh, trying to short crude oil. I'm, I'm certainly I'm currently sitting short two micro crude crude oil contracts. Um, my thinking here is crude oil looks a little bit overextended. So as you can see, uh, I am positive on the day, although I'm currently sitting in a loss here on resettlement. Um, my thinking is that crude oil looks overextended. So uh, let me show you again the 30 minute chart. As you can see, I'm currently sitting short uh, crude oil. Um, I made a little bit of money on these crude oil shorts that I had uh, on Tuesday. And I also uh, did take a short here. Let's ch check out the five minute chart on the NASDAQ. Um, I didn't make, I think I made 12 points. So I had a couple of shorts in today on the NASDAQ that honestly I could have let run much further. Uh, but I did not. Uh, I kind of wussed out of. I kind of wussed out of these. So basically, the only two positions that I took today um, uh, shorting crude oil, and I also shorted the uh, Nasdaq for a few points. And I think that was about it. Crude oil, crude oil, Nasdaq. Yeah, that's it, guys. So. I was just short. I'm I'm still sitting uh, uh, sitting short crude oil and my Nasdaq trade. You know, upon review, um, I could have I could have really uh, let this one run further. Um, I did not. Let me take a look at the regular trading hours. Yeah, as you can see, I was short near the top, but I got scared and and it did end up packing this sell side liquidity here, and it came down into this buy side inbound sell side inefficiency. So. I think in reviewing my trades on the NASDAQ, I could have allowed that to um, I could have allowed that to go further, um, but I did not. Looking at my crude oil trades, um, I I'm just waiting for the day that that crude oil decides that it's you know the reason why you're 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 seeing so many shorts here on on crude oil is. I, I think that crude oil is, is um, going to come back down. So I, I, I don't think that crude oil is going to just continue to go up forever. Um, so I'm sitting short crude oil because of this buy side, this busy here, this busy here. Uh, looking at the daily chart, guys, crude oil is, is very much overextended. Uh, weekly chart, we're coming up into kind of this order block here. The this candle right here you see we just hit the 25% of this candle that we the weekly candle we had for Monday the 31st of October um, we're looking at three green candles here on on crude oil and we also have a buy side imbalance sell side inefficiency here uh, on the weekly chart that is sitting lower so my current thinking has been for quite some time now that crude oil is going to want to come back down um, take out these. You see these relative equal lows here, relative equal lows here. Then we had that weekly uh, buy side imbalance, sell side inefficiency. So my only really strong position that I have at the moment, or my strong sort of bias, is short crude oil. Um, on the stock indices, I'm not nearly as biased, but as on the on crude oil, crude oil looks very extended to me. So. That's a review of my trades for today. Um, I was short the NASDAQ, short crude oil. I didn't make a lot of money, but I was positive. Bye-bye.